this is James Hollywood Machikari, host of Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. Check me out over on Instagram at Insane Throttle Biker News and join in on the discussion over on our YouTube channel at Insane Throttle Biker News Radio Show. Yeah, and don't forget to pound rock on in the comments section. Today's show is dedicated to Corey. Corey, man, we really appreciate that uh, extraordinary donation to the show. If you want a show dedicated to you, all you have to do is send over a donation on our cash app, dollar sign, Motorcycle Madhouse. We really appreciate uh, all the donations from everyone. It really means a lot, especially with uh, what's going on with a lot of the platforms right now. Uh, the podcast edition, you will be getting Nine Inch Nails, Nirvana, and Smashing Pumpkins, man. Plus, an extra segment, uh, News Around the Nation. A lot of people are really loving that uh, podcast edition of the show. Mixing it up since Spotify uh, is letting us uh, use the, uh, the music. They're covering licensing fees, all that good stuff, which makes it possible for us to bring you some uh, music over there. Can't do it, like I said, on uh, YouTube or Facebook because of the licensing stuff. But go on over there. You can at MotorcycleMadhouse.com or listen to it on any of your favorite podcasting platforms today oh today i got a subject that's probably gonna pay a lot of people off but like i said i promise to give both sides of everything especially in my monologues now these are just my thoughts they're not gospel or any of that and i encourage debate on my monologues and topics that i choose I did an article over on HarleyLiberty.com. Yes, HarleyLiberty.com. And what we're going to be talking about is the age of motorcycle clubs is coming to an end. Most bikers don't support them any longer. So, that's what we're going to be talking about. Cue the intro. <laughs> Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. That's right, go over to HarleyLiberty.com, bookmark it in your browser. We have news every single day going on over there, and a lot of the stuff I don't cover here on the uh, show. Again, this episode is dedicated to Corey for his generous donation. So, my monologue, uh, motorcycle clubs are coming to an end. We are in the age of individualism. Yes, we are in that age. A lot of people nowadays are more of individuals. They're not into the group type of stuff. Now, there is a surge in riding clubs. And I argue riding clubs are probably... The closest that you're going to get to the way things were, traditional, whatever you may call it. I know a lot of clubs actually cl claim to be uh, the traditional type of club, but I argue that isn't tr mostly true. If you know your history of the scene, everybody knows after World War II and stuff, uh, all our uh, brave soldiers who just got done fighting in Germany and Japan came home. They were looking for the excitement and stuff. And a lot were getting involved with the race teams. Yes, race teams. It goes all the way back to when the manufacturers just started out. A lot of people don't understand that it was the manufacturers that actually started riding clubs and I'll talk about uh, the race teams in a minute because that goes all the way back as well 
the manufacturers like Harley, uh, I believe Indian, when it was, uh, you know, the original Indian motorcycles, they started these riding clubs in order to sell their products. Now, those riding clubs would get together on the weekends, and the main reason was everybody worked during the day or during the week and was with family and all that good stuff. And the would get out there with buddies to ride in these clubs and stuff. But it was really a big activity back then because let's just face it, there was no TV. There was no friggin' uh, internet. So, these were big type of uh, events to look forward to was going on these big rides. It kind of calmed down uh, during World War II because the whole nation was mobilized. Uh, there was a lot of restrictions as far as, you know, stuff you could buy. There was rationing during World War II. So, everything pretty much came to a stop then of course after world war ii everything started to continue again and that's when racing was really big now the racing teams you know they had uh, the one piece uh type of deal you know some of them had the patch uh some of it some of them printed it on the back of their shirts some of them even painted it on leather jackets at that time that's really when you started seeing the popularity of the teams go through the roofs again after World War II. Well, this was ran by the AMA mostly, the American Motorcycle Association. And I'll talk about them in a minute. It's an organization I support. And, and I'll tell you why I support it in a minute. But again... You know, though that was the sanctioning body of a lot of the races, you know, the flat track and the hill climbs. Well, some uh, guys, you know, race teams and stuff got tired of the AMA stuff and started forming their own races. And that's when they call, were called outlaws, clubs and stuff. And that's when they took their single patches and started cutting off rockers and all that stuff to distinguish them from the other teams that were sanctioned by the AMA. Now, the older fellas, if I got some of my history wrong, go ahead and correct me in the, the comment sections and stuff. But that is my understanding of how everything went uh, together. And then... After the split and stuff, of course, you have that big argument about uh, AMA coming out and saying, you know, the 1% thing and that all got going on. Of course, you know, AMA denies it. Nobody ever freaking know because half of us weren't even alive back then when it uh, all went down. But during that period, a lot of bikers really supported the club scene. A lot. I'm talking basically people got a bike and that's what they wanted to do was join a club, live the life to the fullest, go out there, party hard, and just cause all kinds of hell. <laughs> you know, because it was a counter uh, culture. Uh, that, the 60s and 70s, that's uh, real, really where everything uh, started going with the modern club scene. Uh, and let's just say it took off that way. And it was that aura that was uh, put forth that Harley Davidson actually took on for itself. That outlaw biker, that renegade type of deal. And a lot of people are upset with Harley. And I've covered it a million times of why. But they built their whole reputation on these type of clubs and this type of activity and for them to turn around in 2020 and go all freaking tree hugger that's got a lot of people pissed and it's also got a lot of people going towards its uh, competitor Indian motorcycles as well as other manufacturers because now people don't care what you ride you know Harley Davidson is no longer you know the top of the hill man the king of the mountain whatever you want to call it because let's just face it, man, they're behind in technology. 
uh, the Japs, uh, the British, uh, the Germans, they're all whooping its ass. And not to mention Polaris. So they're having a lot of problems. But let's get back to uh, the motorcycle clubs is coming to an end. And I really base that on the rise in popularity to riding clubs. Individualism, like I said, is upon us. A lot of people don't want to get involved in the politics. They don't want to make it where riding a motorcycle and riding around with clubs are their whole existence. Modern times, it's all technology. Meaning, people have so much more to do than just to hang around like they used to do. Now, that, in my opinion, is going to affect membership in clubs. Especially the outlaw clubs, especially, uh, you know, support clubs. Because, again, people don't want to get involved in them. Another thing that is affecting everything is what people see in the news. And hey, I'm Biker News and I put it out there for people to make up their own mind. But the thing about that is there's a lot of people that are casual. Again, the, they're more enthusiasts than, you know, hardcore bikers. And they see that kind of stuff. And they're like, yeah, you know what? That that ain't cool. Because it's not... The, the temperament and the outlook of people... It's not like it used to be. We all know that. It's more PC, but... You know, it's just not the way it used to be. So, their thinking is... And again, I'm coming from both angles here. Is why not just join, uh, you know, go for a riding club or stay independent and do my own thing? Which, hey, I support riding clubs. That's what I push because I know a lot of people out there don't want to take on the responsibility of being in a club. Because, you know, it's a rat race nowadays, man. Uh, you got to go to work, you got to support your family, and. You know, that only leaves a little time for recreation. Because, again, people don't think like they used to be where this was their whole life and this is what they wanted to do. Ain't like that anymore. Clubs actually used to be popular. Uh, I get, you know, it's just been the last couple years that their support has fallen. And again, I think it's because of what they see in the news or what they hear at the bar scene or rides or what they see. A lot of people are forming these riding clubs to get as close as they can to the traditional scene the way it used to be and staying out of the politics. But what's turning off a lot of people that do join these things is let's just be blunt and honest is you know the outlaw clubs the one percenters whatever you want to call them are you know with this protocol stuff now with protocol in these days everything's changed man you know you can see the protocol channels if you sit back and actually watch uh no one protocol channels the same again it's local by the way but not one of them thinks the same or puts out the same information on protocol. And that's what I think really hurts the club scene. Because it used to be one basic freaking uh, deal across the freaking board. But now it's depending who's in charge, if they want to change it, the whole nine yards. And when clubs now want to start having RCs come around and start with the protocol with the RCs even though RCs could be anything from hog members to 
racing you know that's you know the crotch rockets and all that stuff racing it just ain't doable because people don't have those uh attitudes if they had that attitude they'd be joining the club instead of a riding club so that turns people off when clubs start messing around with the riding clubs and actually i have to argue that's one of the main reasons why you see a lot of riding clubs support law enforcement. Because, again, they just don't want nothing to do with it. They don't want to deal with politics. They don't want to risk their freedom. They don't want to get involved in fights or any of that type of stuff. So, they lose support. The clubs are losing a ton of support. And like I said, the reason why I'm based my, you know, outlook on that and my thinking is because all you have to do is look at the arguments that you're seeing in a lot of threads. You know, you to take a poll. I only had, uh, you know, one. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to do a poll again. I'll probably do it on Facebook because they got, uh, you know, they got the tools for that. But the last time I did one and. It was like 30% uh, freaking really supported clubs. Other than that, a lot of people just were not interested. And I'm not just talking about writing clubs. I'm talking about the independents out there as well. Now let's talk about the AMA a little bit before going into the news. And by the way... We got Nirvana coming up over there on the podcast edition. The AMA I support because I love the fact that they push biker rights. And I'm not talking, you know, let's put motorcycle club profiling off. Well, let's talk about that for a second, you know, instead of going backwards, back and forth. You might hear a lot of club members say, well, we don't care what everybody else thinks. Well, that's fine. But when you take that position, don't come back to them same people that you supposedly don't care about and crying a whine about cops pulling you over or cops doing this or that because it's those people that you really need to back you. So uh, it is what it is to me. But AMA, they go out there, it's not only the profile and stuff, but they work on a range of issues that are specific to motorcycles. Everything from EPA stuff to autonomous vehicles to whole nine yards. Motorcycle Rights Foundation does that as well. I encourage everybody to be a member of both. I do. Plus, I like the perks of the AMA with the discounts at the hotels and discount this and this. But I really like the AMA because of their events. You know, flat track, freaking, uh, they'll let, lend their name as a sponsor to anything that has to do with motorcyclists. You know, American flat track is the main thing, but AMA is also into that type of stuff. They got the Gypsy Tour, I believe, still. So there's a lot of stuff that they do good and that they also charter clubs riding clubs and most of those that are chartered through the AMA is just a one piece patch deal and a lot of clubs I know really don't have nothing to do with AMA they're not going to try to push the protocol stuff on them or you know you might get a different opinion on that you know again there's the protocol channels you to look that stuff up but in my area they really don't mess with AMA clubs because it's two different types of thinking, and why would you risk your membership's freedom over messing with an AMA club, uh, you know, what, to show your, how long your dick is or something? I, you know what, I really don't know. But I do have that article, and I lay a whole bunch of stuff down in that article relating to why I personally think the club membership's really going to start getting a lot thinner. And there's a lot of people out there right now, and it's just not me that think that way. One thing about the uh, internet is word gets around real freaking quick. And there's a lot of others out there that 
bash clubs for what they do. And that negativity is getting out there as well. But we're going to go to uh, Nirvana for Corey right now. And then uh, we're going to take a break. And then we'll be back with some uh, biker news. We're going to have some Night Inch Nails and Smashing Pumpkins over on the podcast edition. And again, we got an extra segment over on there, over on our podcast. So you got to go check it out, man. Uh, Facebook and YouTube, you only get so much. But over there, I am not censored whatsoever. So, let's go to the Nirvana. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Coming up for Corey, man. We got a lot more coming up for you, Corey. If you'd like to donate to the show, you can use the Cash App, Dollar Sign Motorcycle Madhouse, or you can uh, donate via Super chat now let's go to patch.com outlaw motorcycle gang uh, activity reported in marietta guns body armor ammunition drugs and gang indica related to documented outlaw motorcycle gang a sheriff sergeant said tony McAllister. Law enforcement is continuing to investigate outlaw motorcycle gang activity that led to a search warrant service this week in Marietta. The search warrant was served at 10.30 a.m. Tuesday at a home on San Sebastian Avenue by members of the Marietta Regional Gang Task Force along with assistance from the Marietta Police uh, Department's community policing team. According to a report from Sergeant Steve Dyer, of the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. Quote, the warrant was in reference to an ongoing investigation. During the warrant service, three loaded firearms, one that was reported stolen from out of state, body armor, ammunition, drugs, and gang indica related to a documented outlaw motorcycle were found. No arrest were publicly uh, announced but Dyer, uh, Dyer said the investigation was continuing it's unclear what law enforcement uh, to the San uh, Sebastian residents Dyer requested that anyone with information well how the hell do you want to request information you don't tell us who, which clubs involved or what's going on uh, related to the investigation or anyone with information related to any gang or illegal uh, weapon activity in their neighborhood. Contact him. Uh, then it gives the uh, phone number. You know, one thing I hate is when guns are involved they're either stolen or you're not supposed to have one because you're a felon. That really hurts the second amendment man it really does it kills our second amendment here i am freaking scratching my back <laughs> there it happens but you know because i'm a big second amendment guy and i know a lot of other bikers are so when this kind of stuff happens and again it goes towards my opening it really turns people off because <laughs> come on our second amendment's already at risk you don't need to help them you know if you look at uh, the empty uh, vessels website according to the guns what he wants to do oh my god you know they want to put you know see assault weapons they're too damn stupid to understand what a weapon is you know all it is is a dressed up freaking uh rifle it, it, it's not an assault weapon it just looks mean to them but anyway he wants everybody who has one to register them it's right on his website he wants them registered just like you would have to a machine gun yeah that's what they want to do 
So remember that next time you go to the voting booth on November 3rd, what they're really after. So it does, you know, kind of, you know, piss me off when uh, stuff like this is associated with clubs because we're having enough hard times with freaking the Second Amendment right now. Now let's go to some good stuff. BC Local News. Harley Riders Road to Victory. $10,000 donation to the Salvation Army. Hell yeah is what I say. Harley Riders Road to Victory, man. That is a victory. Uh, the 39th Annual Prince Rupert Harley Riders gifted more than 280 toys for from the annual toy ride. Uh, thanks to the Prince Rupert Harley Riders, more than 1,300 local children and families will benefit from the Motorcycle Club's uh, donation of more than 10000 in cash and 280 toys gifted to the Salvation Army. Uh, the 39th annual toy uh, ride held on September 26th was attended by more than 70 motorcycle riders who participated in the day-long ride around the region. Quote, we do this to help out local families with food, clothing, and toys. We've been part of the Salvation Army's budget for almost 40 years. They count on us. Don Butt, uh, a lieutenant and pastor with the Salvation Army, said that this year's COVID-19 has been especially hard on families in Prince Rupert area. And that's one of the things we're going to be talking about as, on the segment over on the podcast the money in the toys raised will go towards the annual Christmas campaign in the city. Traditionally, Christmas, quote, hampers were issued to families in need of a little extra support throughout the holiday season. However, in modern day, hampers have been replaced with gift cards for families to purchase needed groceries and items. And a lot of people are having hard times, hard times right now. Uh, it don't help when a lot of cities or occupied Illinois are closed down again. Families who are facing harder times this year can register for Christmas assistance between November 2nd to the 6th and November 9th to the 13th by calling the Salvation Army at 250-624-6180, extension 2 or 4. Registrants will need to have on hand identification, household expenses, and income. Registration will be completed by phone only, at which time an appointment will be made for the collection of toys and gift cards. Rock and roll, guys, man. 10 G's. That's just freaking amazing. I love it. Uh-oh, Harley Davidson. <laughs> they having another freaking problem with that live wire. You know, it's funny. When it first came out, there was problems, and now there's problems again. There is a recall over a software malfunction. More than 1,000, and that's probably all they freaking sold, <laughs> of the electric motorcycles are subject to the recall. Though just a few owners have actually reported a problem. Well, they got to get ahead of that because, you know, that was their flagship deal, that live wire for 30 grand. <laughs> Two recalls already. Uh, Harley Davidson is, you know, we talked about that. Uh, it was discovered a software problem that could cause the electric bike's powertrain to shut down without warning. Yeah, that's a little bit of a freaking problem, don't you think? Although the bike maker expects just 1% of the motorcycles will actually have the malfunction, it is recalling all of the models within the particular production run to update the software. That's one thing with motorcycles with me, okay? I don't have to want to depend on software. I just want to ride. <laughs> uh, Short-circuiting sales. This isn't uh, Harley's first issue with the live wire. I said that at the beginning. Just as it debuted the motorcycle, it discovered a problem with the onboard level 1 charger that hooks up to a household outlet that caused the company to shut down production for a week to resolve the issue. 
since its introduction last year, Harley hasn't released any live wire production or sales data, leading uh, analysts to estimate uh, first year production would be around a 1,600 bikes. Well, there you go. I said it. I said it. Uh, the reception for the high-performance electric motorcycle has been uniformly positive. I don't know anybody who says that, but okay, you go with it. It's your story. With most marbling as its technological prowess, the main concern continues to be a $30,000 price tag, which led analysts to suspect uh, sales would be in hundreds rather than thousands, of course. Harley doesn't say what percentage of Livewire's total production run is involved again in the recall, only noting that a handful of bikes my ass. It said uh, it received two reports. The Livewire suffered a loss of propulsion and during its investigation discovered an issue with the bike's onboard charger. Uh, the loss of propul or propulsion uh, while driving increased the risk of crash. And it's received more, four more uh, complaints potentially related to the OBC prompting the initial recall. So if you got a recall of about 1,000 bikes, you only sold 1,600, that's a problem. Now, sad state of affairs right here. Post-Crescent, former Appleton, uh, where the hell did that story go? <laughs> there it is. Uh, I hate when it does that stuff. Former Appleton Harley-Davidson owner Terry Dowdy dies in a uh, car crash, uh, but he was on his bike. My fault. Uh, he was 68 of Hordenville. He was at a, uh, a traffic light, stopped on his motorcycle. Uh, this was in Tennessee when a truck hit him from behind. Oh, that's the biggest worry for a motorcyclist is sitting at a traffic stoplight and always looking at the mirrors and wondering if somebody's going to stop or not. Uh, paramedics took him to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. The driver of the truck told police she did not notice the motorcycle was stopped. Yeah, a good one right there. That's always the case. I didn't see him. I didn't see the motorcycle. <sighs> Sad stuff. Uh, quote, he will be remembered as someone who was always willing to help out anyone in need. It's amazing how many lives he was able to touch, said his son Josh, who operated the dealership with him and became so owner when Dowdy uh, retired at the end of 2016. Now, a good story here. Somber Souls vroomed in an Ed uh, food pantry. Uh, Susan Kelly uh, Netterden. Uh, rain or shine, winter snow, flood or fire, pandemic or no pandemic, every Saturday morning from 10 to 12, the food pantry uh, volunteers distributed donated food to residents throughout the peak to peak uh, region. Since COVID-19 seized the community in March, food pantry patrons wear masks, stay in their cars, and wait for friendly volunteer to load a box of food in the trunk. Uh, October 10th was no different except for one thing, the anticipated arrival of the Sober Souls Motorcycle Club and a truckload of toiletries and supplies for the food pantry. Uh, this is great stuff, man. I love it. You know, bikers are always fucking helping the community and they get such a bad rap, especially now. Uh, you know, we did that one story where... Uh, Yahoo News said that uh, bikers are now super spreaders of uh, the COVID-19 because of that Sturges deal. So, ugh, that one got me going. Anyway, uh, 1220, uh, they arrived. Uh, let's see here. Uncle Ron led the place, uh, the group. Longtime member of the Sobel, or Sober uh, Souls Chapter 381, an addiction counselor at Jefferson Center. Sober Souls has been around for over 28 years helping individuals who struggle with substance abuse and addiction. Uh, they're required to maintain sobriety, hence their slogan, Breaking the Chain. They are also committed to putting the welfare of the group above self-interest and helping others. Rock and roll, man. So uh, they really de uh, delivered a whole truckload of stuff that was awesome. 
like herself in that community, man. Now, Corey Grass, Wallace Shame, San Antonio police officer arrested on DWI charge after driving at 100 miles an hour and swerving. Beautiful. Good God, you guys. Late breaking news this morning, a San Antonio police officer arrested and charged with DWI. Officer Rafael Hernandez III was seen driving about 100 miles per hour and swerving onto the shoulder of Loop 410 near I-10. That's when he was pulled over and officers determined he was driving under the influence. Hernandez has been with the department for three and a half years. He's being placed on administrative leave during the investigation. Yeah, there you go. Another DWI or DUI as we call them uh, here in Illinois. But yeah, swerving. Not nice. Not nice being a cop and doing that. But he'll, uh, you know, do his little time, get his freaking, uh, you know, slap on the hand, and then he'll be arresting people for DUI. <laughs> Hypocrites. Anyway, we're going to go to the Smashing Pumpkins right now for Corey, man. Uh, again, if you like to donate, you can uh, buy the cash app at uh, dollar sign motorcycle madhouse then i'll be right back with my uh you know final thoughts for uh youtube and facebook then we'll go on to our uh, next segment china doll from hollywood and china doll evening show join us monday through friday 7 p.m central standard time on spotify apple Podcasts, and youtube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment see you there boys, boys. get your copy of the new age of biden and brotherhood by Insane Throttle's very own James Hollywood Montgomery. New Age of Fighting and Brotherhood will take you on a journey of the past and present fighters. Get your copy on Amazon and all major book retailers. Rock on. Oh, yeah. New Age of Biking and Brotherhood. Boy, did I let loose in that book. You can get your copy now over at Amazon or all the major book relate tailors. Go over there and check it out, man. I give you some stuff that uh, many people don't uh, know. So get it. And uh, Corey, man, how you doing, buddy? We're going to be having uh, some smashing pumpkins coming up for you in a second. But my final thoughts for uh, Facebook and uh youtube listeners man what do i gotta say here man uh you know my monologue i know is probably gonna piss off a lot of people really good it usually does you know i always got that you know one or two haters that you know dislike us and they don't even see the program they do it every day you know what they are stalkers my god uh at least you know air your bitches man air your bitches tell us what's wrong with you are you like they're smoking freaking some uh 420 and accidentally hit that every damn day i don't know what's going on with you man and that's one thing about the internet that uh <laughs> is something else you can always hide behind that computer don't have to tell people who you are and then they expect creators to acknowledge them <laughs> i guess i just did uh but that is always uh funny stuff but going back to the monologue, membership is down. I can tell that uh, real hard. Uh, we do know, uh, even, you know, just this past freaking summer, all the bikers and motorcyclists out there supporting law enforcement and their jobs, you got to say, man, that would have never used to happen. Never. And it was, if it did, it wasn't that damn big. But now it's like that everywhere, man. So that should be alarming to a lot of members of clubs. But again, they'll go back and say, hey, we got our little deal here. Or we don't really care about what everybody else thinks. And hey, you know what? That is America. That is a free country. Do what you want. But then you're going to have to hear, well, you don't care about us. Why should we care about you, deal? And, uh, yeah, you know, one mistake I think that a lot of clubs are doing is if they uh, go mess around with riding clubs. Uh, because just the nature of a riding club, it tells you that they don't want to be around that kind of stuff. They don't want to be around the politics, like I said. All they want to do is go ride and party. You know, now I do agree if you have a riding club that's sporting a three piece patch, yeah, then you just became different than what you're supposed to be. And a lot of people use riding clubs to move into the MC scene uh, undetected, which isn't cool. 
you're either going to be what you proclaim to be or you're going to be a hypocrite. You can't have it both ways, man. If you just want to ride, then just ride. Don't try to go and act like an MC and then, uh, you know, bitch and moan when they come back and say, hey, man, you know, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're acting like an MC. You know, this is the way protocol works. You can't bitch. You really can't. So it's either, again, you're a riding club or you're an MC. You know, and if you try to go to the MC route, there's protocols that have to be followed. But, you know, that's uh, my little spiel on that. As uh, far as the biker news, man, I love all the good stories that are coming out. I think that's one of my favorite parts of the show is the good that bikers do. Because they're not really recognized like they should be. And that's, you know, that's pretty damn sad. But... More and more, I think the local news is covering the biker scene. It's just that national news, they have a heart on for everybody. Especially in these times where you got bikers for Trump and then they automatically equate bikers with that organization. And that couldn't be furthest from the truth because... I don't know many of them, you know, f people that are involved in that in my area anyway, and I'm talking locally. Uh, you know, they might be closet bikers for Trump. Who freaking knows, man? My question with bikers for Trump is, after Trump's out of office eventually, what the hell do you do from there? You know, start MAGA party? You know, that's one thing I was thinking about the other day. I was like, you know what? Trump has transformed every damn thing. So if he does leave office, all he has to do is start the MAGA party, and uh, that would decimate the Republicans. But, uh, yeah, you know, America first type of deal. So, you know, but it sucks that the media treats bikers that way because they equate them on the national level to that type of stuff. Uh, it's also awesome seeing a lot of the bikers out there filling uh, food pantries and stuff. COVID-19 has really wrecked everything. And I'm going to argue in the next segment that, you know, it's not a federal thing. It's a state level thing. There's not much that the federal government can do with this except make sure that the supplies are there that's needed. It's on the local level, the state level that... Uh, causes all this crap man it really does and you see a lot of difference between the states you really do so with that we're going to be uh playing some nine inch nails for Corey, and then we're going to go into our next segment if you're over on uh youtube and facebook join us over on freaking itunes spotify uh, I heart all that stuff, man. And don't forget to uh, subscribe to uh, Hollywood and China Dow's freaking uh, YouTube channel. We're also on all the major podcasts and platforms. Take us to work to, with you and all that good stuff. Uh, like I said, it's always awesome hearing people say, hey, we're listening to you at work or we're listening to you in the car, all that good stuff because winter is coming. And I seen a live shot from Sturges yesterday, and there's snow all over the place, and here I am in northern Illinois saying, oh, shit, when are we going to get it? You know, there was some flurries and stuff the other day. I was like, man, I'm getting too old for this. My knees are going to be killing me again, my, especially the one that I'm uh, having trouble with right now. Uh, sitting there thinking, uh, do I do this or do I do the surge? I don't know, man. Uh, I actually, I'm going to have a video coming out. I get, went and bought a truck cap for the freaking Silverado, thinking about getting that converted into a camper type of deal. So that'll be coming out, having some fun. But uh, let's go to our uh, break with uh, uh, Nine Inch Nails. I should do a blooper re uh, reel. And then... Uh, I'll see you on the other side over on the podcast. Mm -hmm. 